Hello students, in this video we'll find the Christoffel symbols in spherical coordinates. Let's recall that in spherical coordinates we have ds squared is really d rho squared plus rho squared sine squared theta and then a d phi squared plus rho squared theta squared which tells us that our metric tensor gij is equal to what? Is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0 rho squared sine squared theta, a rho squared here, a zero here, a zero, and a zero, like that. And so of course we have these beautiful coefficients and we know that these are orthogonal curve linear coordinates. So these coordinates are orthogonal curve linear coordinates because I have a diagonal matrix. It doesn't have to be diagonal, but in this case it makes it easier. And we know special formulas for the Christoffel symbols in orthogonal curve linear coordinates. We've previously proven this, these formulas over here, these Christoffel symbols in orthogonal coordinates. And this is only true when the, me when the uh, metric is diagonal. I have gamma i, j, k is zero for distinct indices. I have gamma, gamma i, j, j is negative one over two g i, i. That's the inverse met metric. And then a derivative of g, j, j with respect to, that's a j, that's a j, with respect to the x, i coordinates. And then finally, if I have two indices over here, and these are for fixed, not for summation, right? So in other words, these repeated indices, so I have an i, i, I'm not summing over it fixed number over here. So that's important to realize I'm not summing over i over here is going to be what? It's going to be the log. It's going to be d by dx j, the log of the square root of um, what? Of the i, i component, g, i, i, like that. Okay. Again, these are for fixed indices. It's not, I'm not summing over i over here is with Einstein summation. These are all indices are fixed, right? Indices fixed. Okay. So these results are only true orthogonal curve linear coordinates. So let's make the conventions over here. I'm going to call, so with this convention over here, that, that, that says what? That says that my one is my row. So over here, one corresponds to row, two corresponds to phi, three corresponds to theta. Okay, we're going to use those conventions over here. So I know that if I have a gamma of, for example, of a 2, 1, 3, that's going to be zero. I can use this relationship over here. So in other words, one example of that would be gamma of rho theta phi is automatically zero by this first rule, by the trivial rule. Similarly, gamma of phi theta rho is zero. Gamma of, and there's lots of other variants of this thing. Uh, let me show all of them though, yep. And then theta, and then rho what? Theta, a rho and phi are zero. Those are trivial relationships we get for orthogonal um, curve linear coordinates, right? And so now let's look at them when they're all equal. So I haven't mentioned that rule, but I just replaced the j over here with an i, right? So let's look at all the all the things over here. Let's look at gamma rho rho rho, which is gamma one one one, which is what? Which is going to be the derivative of rho with respect to rho, because that's my one variable over here. And then the uh, log of the square root of one and that's clearly just zero. So I get gamma of rho, rho, rho is equal to zero. Let's look at gamma of phi, phi, phi. That's gamma of two, two, two. That's going to be a derivative with respect to phi. So d by d phi of the um, log of what? And of course, remember that these things are the dot product squared, right? So those are my matrix coefficients over there. All right, excellent. And so what are we going to do now? And so now we're going to do a d by d phi of the log of the square root of the phi components, rho squared sine squared phi, theta rather. There's no, uh, no components of that. There's no phi's over here, so that's just going to be zero. And if I let's do phi of theta, uh, theta, theta, that's going to be gamma of 3, 3, 3. That's a theta derivative of the log of the 3, 3 entry over here, which is rho squared, right? square root of rho squared. So all of those Christoffel symbols are also equal to zero. That's great, right? The more Christoffel symbols you have, the more complex your gradients and Laplacians become in these different coordinate systems. All right, so let's look at the rows. So remember that that's rho. I can do a gamma one, two, two. That would be what? That would be gamma of rho and then phi, phi. What's that gonna be? 
Let's use this for, so I want a two to the this formula is negative one half, negative one half. And then my J, my I over here is one, so that's a row row. The row entry my metric tensor over here is just gonna be a one, right? That's a one. I have to do the derivative of the this entry over here, derivative of that entry, with respect to my I component, and my I component over there is one. So I have to do the row derivative, now the row derivative of sine squared, row, row squared, sine squared, theta, like that. Okay. Excellent. And so what am I going to get over here? I'm going to get exactly just negative rho sine squared theta, like that. Beautiful. Okay. So again, let's just check to make sure we're on the right track, right? So I have an i is equal to 1. So I put a negative 1 over 2, one, negative 1 half times 1. And then the derivative of the 2, 2 entry, so that's going to be this entry over here, with respect to x, i, which in this case is 1, so that's the rho entry. So we get that perfectly. Let's do the gamma 1, gamma 1 of 3, 3. That's gamma rho of theta, theta. That's going to be by the same formula over here, negative 1 over 2 times 1. Then the rho derivative of what? The rho derivative of the theta, theta term. That's the jj term is this term over here. So it's going to be rho derivative of just rho squared. And that's just going to give me a negative rho, like that. Excellent. OK, very good. Now we have those things. Now let's do the mixed ones over here. So I need to do a mixed term. So let's do a gamma 1, 1, 2, which is gamma rho, rho, um, phi over here. So what formula are we going to use over here? We're going to do the phi derivative. This is going to be the phi derivative of the log of what? The phi derivative of the log of the uh, I, I, which is going to be 1, 1, the log of the row entry, which is going to be 1. So that's going to be log of root 1, and that, of course, is 0. Let's do gamma 1, gamma 1, 1, 3, which is gamma rho, rho, theta. That's going to be a theta derivative, according to our formula, of the log of the square root of 1, which also is 0. And now we have all of our row terms over here, right? We have the rho, rho, rho. We have the rho, phi, phi. We have the rho, theta, theta. We have the rho, rho phi and then the rho rho theta, right? Everything else is going to be zero because in that case I've expa I've had all threes are rows. I've had exactly one row and then I've had exactly two rows because if any, and then I can't have all distinct, right? So if they're all distinct, I would get the zero so I can use that. So that handles all the row cases. All right, let's do, let's transition to the phi cases now. So will the phi cases be? So that's going to be the twos. So I'm going to do a gamma. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to do a 2, 1, 1. So if I do a 2, 1, 1, we have to use this formula over here. That's going to be negative 1 over 2. And then I have an i, which is a 2. So that's going to be a uh, this term over here. So that's going to be a rho squared sine squared theta, like that. Excellent. And then I have to do the rho derivative. So I have to do the, excuse me, I have to do the um, i is what? i is 2. So I have to do the phi derivative of what? The phi derivative of um, the phi derivative of the two two and of the um, of the of the row entry, which is just one, and that gives me a zero, right? Similarly, if I did gamma two and then three three, that's going to be a what? That's going to be a negative one over one over two, and then sine rho squared sine squared theta. And I have to do a what? Then I have to do an i derivative, so that's going to correspond to a 2 derivative, so a phi derivative of the theta entry over here, right? And so what's the theta entry going to be? The theta entry over here is going to be a rho squared, and so we again get 0. Okay, excellent. So those ter terms come from the fact that when you're doing either a 1, 1 or a 3, 3, you have to do a what derivative? You're doing an i derivative, which corresponds to a 2 or a phi derivative. There's no, there's no phi's in the metric tensor, so both those terms are going to be 0, right? Let's do a gamma of 2, 2, 1. So what will that give us? So gamma of 2, 2, 1 is going to be, we're going to use this formula over here now. It's going to be the derivative with respect to 1, so the d rho derivative, the rho derivative of what? The rho derivative of the rho derivative of the log of the square root of the gii, in this case, which is 2. So square root of rho squared sine squared theta. No, that's just the row derivative of what? That's just the row derivative of the log of rho and then sine theta. Of course, the sine theta is a constant with respect to this, so I just get a 1 over rho. 
Excellent. So the 2, 2. And now I got to do the what? And now I have to do the gamma 2, 2, 3, which is going to be the what? That's going to be the theta derivative over here. So I got to do a theta derivative now. Because my j, theta derivative of what? Of the same thing over here, of the log, log of root rho squared sine squared theta, which is d by d theta of the log of rho, and then sine theta. So that's going to be a cosine over sine. Cosine over sine is cotangent, so cotangent of theta over there. Excellent. That handles the phi derivatives. Let's move on to the theta derivatives over here. So what will the theta derivatives give us? I'll do the same thing. I have to do a gamma 3, 1, 1, and a gamma 3, 2, 2. So what's gamma 3, 1, 1 going to be? So gamma 3, 1, 1 is going to be what? Gamma 3, 1, 1. Gamma 3, 1, we use this formula over here. It's going to be negative 1 over 2. And then GII, my GII is going to be a 3, 3. So that's going to be a row squared down over there. Excellent. And then we need to do a d then I need to do a derivative of the one one entry over here with respect to uh, the with respect to theta, right? Great. And that one one entry is just gonna be one, so again this is just gonna be zero. What about gamma one one uh, gamma two two rather three? That's gonna be a negative one over negative one over two row squared. Then we have to do a what? We have to do a theta derivative, a theta derivative of the 2, 2 entry, which is rho squared sine, uh, sine, let's make sure that I have this correct over here, um, sine squared theta like that. All right, because that's the 2-2 two, two entry over here, right? So the 2-2 two, two entry, the theta derivative of that thing over there. So what we're going to have over here is we're going to have a, the rows are going to cancel out. The 2 is going to cancel out, so I'm going to have a negative sine theta times cosine of theta like that. Excellent. Now I've got to do the alternating ones. So what are the alternating ones going to give us? So let's look at gamma of what? Gamma of 3, 3, 1. So will gamma of 3, 3, 1 be? We have to use this formula over here, right? That's going to be the derivative with respect to rho of what? So the derivative with respect to rho of the log of the square root of the i is now 3, so that's the square root of rho squared. So that's the derivative with respect to rho of the log of rho, and that's just going to be a 1 over rho. That's my gamma of theta, theta, and then rho, of course. And then I need a gamma of 3, 3, 2. And that's going to be the derivative with respect to what? The derivative with respect to rho, right? Um, excuse me, the derivative with respect to now what? My j is equal to 2, so that's the derivative with respect to phi. Okay, the respect to phi of the log of um, the 3, 3 entry over here, right? So that's going to be the square root of rho. And again, that is going to be equal to 0 because there's no phi's there, right? And so, of course, this is going to be gamma of theta, theta, phi over here, right? Now, I didn't do the gamma 3, 3, 1 because the symmetry of the Christoffel symbols in the reciprocal coordinates over here. So we have this term over here, this term over here, right? So I have a gamma of rho phi phi, a gamma of rho theta theta. I have a non-zero gamma of phi phi rho, a non-zero gamma of phi phi theta, a, net, a zero of that. I have a non-zero of a gamma of theta phi phi, a non-zero of a gamma of theta, theta rho, and then that is all the non-zero Christoffel entries for the Christoffel symbols and spherical coordinates. So these formulas over here play an essential role in quickly computing the Christoffel symbols and spherical coordinates, which are very useful when we're looking at formulas for the gradients, divergence, curl, and Laplacian in different coordinate frames. Thank you very much.